गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द लाइफ टूडे काफी दिनों बाद आई थॉट वील हैव अ लाइफ टूडे इट हैज बीन अ लॉन्ग एक्सटेंडेड न्यू ईयर वेकेशन फॉर अस सो आई थॉट आई विल बी एबल टू स्क्वीज एटलीस्ट वन लाइफ थोड़ी मेरे को खुद ही शर्म आ गई कि इतने अब मेरे पास कोई बहाना नहीं होगा अगर मैंने इस हफ्ते भी लाइव नहीं करा सो वेलकम टू द लाइफ टूडे एंड आई होप यू हैड अ फैबलेस न्यू ईयर ईव and i thought on this occasion i'll take this liberty to bother you guys with a very boring life but it's, it can be really interesting in case you guys are interested and anything to everything you need to know about shippers declaration is going to be covered today in my live so today it's going to be a very quick live about shippers declaration what all it needs to include and what it is all about in nutshell so basically shippers declaration is applicable when we are carrying bulk cargoes and bulk cargoes which are primarily covered by ims bc code सबसे पहला कंफ्यूजन द फर्स्ट कंफ्यूजन वेन इट कम्स इज रिमेंबर गाइज वेन एवर द वर्ड शिपर डेक्लेन कम टू योर कम्स टू योर माइंड इट इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल वेन यू गाइज आर लोडिंग बल्क कागो एज पर आई एम एस बी सी कोड सो इन केस यू आर लोडिंग ग्रेन कागो देन आई एम देन शिपर डेक्लेन इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल रीजन बींग द ग्रेन कोड से लाइक इफ यू आर लोडिंग व्हील व्हीट इफ यू आर लोडिंग कनोला दैट इज गवर्न बाय द रेगुलेशन ऑफ ग्रेन कोड एंड ग्रेन कोड डज नॉट रिक्वायर शिपर्स डेक्लेन यू मे स्टिल आस्क फॉर इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू द कागो विच यू आर लोडिंग से लाइक इन केस ऑफ सोयाबीन यू मे लाइक टू नो लाइक यू नो द एवरेज टेम्परेचर ऑफ द कागो द मॉइस्चर कॉन्टेंट द ऑयल कॉन्टेंट बट दैट्स नॉट शिपर्स डेक्लेन शिपर्स डेक्लेन इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल टू बल्क कागोज एज पर आई एम एस बी सी कोड विच इज लाइक प्रिसाइजली द सेक्शन फोर पॉइंट टू सो इफ यू गो टू आई एम एस बी सी कोड इफ यू ओपन आई एम एस बी सी कोड एंड यू कम टू सेक्शन फोर पॉइंट टू दैट्स वे यू गोइंग टू फाइंड the requirement of shippers declaration so basically whenever you are loading any bulk cargo shippers declaration is going to basically give you all the information related to the cargo agar bahut simple language mein rakhu so cargo ke bare mein important information pertinent information about the cargo its properties its name correct uh, you know shipping name everything will be covered by shippers declaration so in a way ye choti si summary hogi jisko read karke you will get to know everything about the cargo which you are going to load you know what is its group name of the cargo any typical properties related with it any hazard related with it and also it covers a very important section is it is it because tomorrow once you discharge the cargo or once you are loading the cargo you may be required to you know get rid of the residues which will be left inside the cargo hold or on your deck can you clear those residues once the ship has finished loading so that important information is also included in uh, your shipper's declaration primarily there are 17 to 18 points which is required by the code we will cover that right in the end but just to give you a very short uh, run through then this is a typical format of a shippers declaration this is exactly from the code itself now you can see all the information which is required to be covered examination examiners ka bhi kafi important or favorite question hai but the most important part is it is also required practically you need to know all these things when you are sailing on board as a master as a chief mate even as a third mate second mate this information should be known to you because this is also related to the safety of the vessel the overall safety of the operation is governed by this information so you need to know this information so if you are a third mate you are going to load a coal cargo all you need to get your hands to is first thing first is shipper's declaration once the loading is confirmed or prior loading at least so shipper's declaration as per the code it is supposed to be provided by the shipper shipper simple language mein wo banda hai jiska cargo hum log carry kar rahe hain banda matlab gender specific nahi hona ja raha but just for an example say so jiska cargo ja raha hai so if in case mere ko coal bhejna hai hong kong se india so i am the shipper so ye meri responsibility hai ki main us cargo se related sari information master ko loading se pehle provide karu so shipper declaration should be provided to the master prior the cargo loading commences at least ठीक है उससे पहले भी हम लोग प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं बट ज्यादा जल्दी क्यों नहीं प्रोवाइड कर सकते उसका मैं रीजन आपको बताऊंगा सो बिफोर यू स्टार्ट लोडिंग द कागो से लाइक वन और टू डेज बिफोर अराइवल यू मस्ट लुक फॉर दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन एज अ सेकंड मेट थर्ड मेट कैडेट चीफ मेट डजेंट रियली मैटर एंड यू शुड लुक फॉर ऑल दीज पॉइंट एंड इट विल प्रिटी मच कवर एवरीथिंग ए टू जी यू नीड टू नो प्रिसाइजली फॉर दिस कागो यू कैन गोइंग टू मोर डिटेल बाई गोइंग टू द आई एम एस बी सी कोड बट ये तो बेर मिनिमम रिक्वायरमेंट है जो हर किसी को जांच पे जो पार्ट है लोडिंग टीम का पता होना चाहिए इफ यू शेयर दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन विद योर abs with your crew even better because that then the team comes together and everybody is on the same page so level playing platform guys is very 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 important so we'll start with the first point first shippers declaration what is the requirement the requirement is because of the code imsbc code requires each shipper whenever they are shipping bulk cargo they need to they are required to provide the master something called shippers declaration which is governed by section 4.2 of the code and all this information needs to be included so first thing first which we can see i'll turn the camera around so guys so that you guys can focus on the information or in case if it is not the it must be coming as a mirror image but so far as i am able to explain you i'll try and stay in front of the camera keeps it more interactive or mera bhi thoda sa show branding ho jata hai correct 
So first thing first, if you see this is the form, this is the normal format. So in case you are preparing for your examinations as a chief mate, if you want a shipper's declaration original format, just type and you will get a PDF format. Otherwise, just uh, go to any library, look for MSBC code, go to section 4.2 and there they have given you this sample format. PDF may be available online, you can download it and keep it if you want to know what all information is required or as a sample tomorrow you need to carry it on board. But on board MSBC will to you can see it First thing first is BCSN. This is one of the most controversial section. The first section is, itself is carries the maximum number of mistakes. BCSN is bulk cargo shipping name. BCSN. Now most of the time the requirement of bulk cargo shipping name is because in different part of the world the same cargo can be described differently. So that there is a uniform standard to describe a cargo. The requirement of BCSN came in. So BCNS is bulk cargo shipping name. So this name has to be exactly how it is in the code. Agar MSBC may coal likha hai, so it has to describe it has to be described as coal. But coal will also have like different trade names in the market, like bituminous coal, African coal, or any coal, you know. But you cannot write BCSN as African coal or bituminous coal. That will be incorrect. So whenever you receive uh, your shipper's declaration, first thing first is BCNS. Kya jo cargo mein carry kar the cargo which I intend to carry, has it been described correctly? Maximum number of mistakes I see over here you know in routine that bulk cargo shipping name jo cargo mein carry kar raha hu uska naam hi galat diya hua hai and usually they, you will typically see that the shipper will write the trade name of the cargo they can write the trade name they are allowed to write the trade name but it should come in the general description of the cargo so if you are carrying a coal whose variety is bituminous coal for an example they should write it here if, if they have written bituminous coal over here it's acceptable but bcsn should be exactly how the cargo is described in the coal in in the code sorry so if I'm loading coal cargo, the BCNS must say coal. Okay. And how we will get to know the BCSN? If, 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 if at all there is a controversy, you can go back to your agent, you can go back to your charterer, you can go back to your shipper and ask them to con confirm what cargo I'm, I'm exactly going to carry as per the code. So what is the correct BCSN of the code? That's when if once you get to know the name of the cargo, you can go in the IMSBC code and read, read about that. And then later, you know, inquire more information about it as per the shipper's declaration. So first mistake, which I see often is incorrect bulk cargo shipping name. So that's important. And remember guys, different part of the world, depending how strict the port authorities are, how the regulation, which part of the world you are loading, you will see many mistakes in the format. Few formats will not even correlate to the format I'm showing you. So though this format is, is recommended, for, is, is a format required by the court, still you will see in many part of the world, people will not comply, the shippers will not comply with all the information which is required. So you are as a master well within your right to turn around and say, I want the shipper declaration exactly in this format. And the shippers are supposed to give it to you. This is required by the code, in turn required by SOLAS itself. So you are well within your right that if this information is not provided to you, at least prior to the loading, you are in well within your rights to stop the cargo or not accept the cargo as a master. Okay, or as a chief officer, you can raise an alert about it in case your master has missed it. So bulk cargo shipping name, first thing first. Second, is shippers. So shippers is basically whosoever like is the shipper, his details should be mentioned as it is correctly. Name of the consignee, yes, sub common definitions and shipper consignee. Then name and means of the transportation port and place of departure. So basically port name and your ship's name is going to be over here. Transport document number, basically it can include your UN number, it can include information regarding regarding to your if, 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 if there is a specific UN number or if there is anything specific to the cargo other than UN number, that kind of transport documentation number can come over here. Carrier is going to be your ship's name. Correction, carrier is going to be your ship's name, not over here. Uh, means of transport, that's going to be the port and uh, uh, place of departure will be the port. Uh, your carrier is going to be a ship's name over here. Instruction and other matters, generic information. Like I said, in case they want to describe, give more description about the cargo, then they can write over here, general description. Other than that, there are few other important, you know, information which you are going to look like general description of the cargo, which can in include your shippers, uh, like your generic name of the cargo. Like I said, give you the example of bituminous coal. You can use such generic terminology over here. Then the amount of cargo which is being proposed to load should come over here. This is again very important because if this number is not correct, then we don't even know to which particular lot or which particular parcel of the cargo this shipper declaration is addressed to. So this information is important and you must always check. Coming down. Now this section is very, very important guys. Pay special attention to it. You must make sure that this information is given to you. 
irrespective of the cargo you are loading storage factor is very important why storage factor is important because you are going to calculate your cargo basis is storage factor so the volume uh, the weight of the cargo which you can squeeze in a hold will depend on the volume of the hold itself and the storage factor of the cargo so remember this storage factor the the the, the value which you take for cargo calculation officially should be this value not the value which agent has given you, not the value which shippers has given you, but the value which is included in your shippers declaration. And if there is an ambiguity, you can always go back to them to correct either of the two. Okay, so storage factor is very, very important. Angle of repose. Why angle of repose is important? Because angle of repose is the angle beyond which if the ship is healed or listed, the, the cargo will shift. So if my angle of repose is 25 degrees, so if my ship heals or lists more than 20 degrees, the cargo is going to shift. So during the passage, sea passage, this is one of the most important point I need to know from the cargo care point of view, from the safety of the vessel point of view. Why? Because if I run into heavy weather and my ship is rolling more than 20 degrees and the angle of repose itself was 20 degrees, then the chances are that the cargo may shift or is likely to shift. Trimming procedures, in case there is a special requirement for trimming that cargo, how it has to be trimmed, how much it has to be trimmed, then it is covered by trimming procedures. If there are special requirements to it, then the shipper is going to include it here. Then chemical properties, if as a hazard, say like for something like coal cow, it can emit methane, it can have like, you know, issues like, you know, you know, if, if in case it is high on uh, moisture content, then, you know, it will mention it here, the exact, you know, uh, hazards which are associated with that particular parcel of coal. To give you a few examples, one is the methane emission. If the coal itself is more liable to emit methane, then those special chemical properties will be included here. If it's high on pH value, it will be included over here. Other than that, then you have got, you know, there is... A category called MHB. If there are few cargoes which are considered hazardous when carried carried in bulk, so this information is also included here, and you will also find it if you go to the correspondent section of the IMSBC code, which I'm going to cover right in the end. So as of now, just follow the format. There will be few questions which I will take right in the end and explain few things in more detail. Now this section is one of the most important section, and again, just like uh, uh, BCSN uh, bulk cargo shipping name. I see maximum mistakes being made in this area, this area either not being included or being incorrectly written. The word which we use to group cargoes in as per MSBC code is group A, group B, group C. At, at, on, on many occasions you will see instead of the word group A, it will be written as class A. There is nothing like in MSBC code like class A or class B. So group A cargoes are cargoes which are, which, which are liable to liquefy. Okay. Group B cargoes are cargoes which have got chemical hazards associated with them. And Group C cargo means subsidized Sharif cargo. Okay, na? Neither it can liquefy nor it has got any specific chemical hazards associated with it. So if it is Group C which is ticked, it's fine. And you will also cross check that it should match with your relevant code information. So if you go to relevant section of that particular cargo in IMSBC code, it must match. Now for an example, coal is a cargo which can be Group B, which can be or Group A or B both. In case you ever see a tick mark in front of group A, then you will require additional two certificates which must and must accompany this uh, shipper's declaration because the cargo is liable to liquefy. Then the first certificate which you are going to look along with this IMSB, uh, with this shipper's declaration as per IMSBC code 4.2.3 is going to be your transportable moisture uh, limit certificate, TML certificate and the second certificate is going to be a moisture content certificate, very important certificate. So the moment you as a duty officer, you as a chief might see that the cargo is group A, we must seek these two additional certificate which must accompany my shipper's declaration, very important guys. Moving forward, you will see that specifically they have also included the same thing which I just spoke uh, which I just told you that, like the TML and the moisture content but these are just figures until and unless they are not accompanied with a certificate why there are certain procedures which are required by the code by which you judge how the how much is the transportable moisture limit of the cargo and how much is the actual moisture content of the cargo so the figures will be mentioned here so if there is a group a cargo you must be provided with these two figures if it is a group c cargo these two figures are not applicable to you because it is not liable to liquefy so the tml and moisture content will actually be, it's not going to bother you at all but if it's a group a cargo the shipper must provide these two information very very important and other than providing this information they must provide the similar information in the certificate itself. So you will get a transportable moisture limit certificate and a moisture content certificate separately which must match this detail and which must match the date of the shipper's declaration itself. I'll scroll down the list furthermore for you guys to have a look or rather zoom it out a bit. Okay, 
This is again, it's a very, very important declaration, guys. And especially from a chief mate's point of view. You see, it says classification relating to Marpol NX5. Marpol NX5 is related to garbage. Now, garbage NX5, the cargo, the disposal of cargo residues at sea requires that the cargo should not be harmful to marine environment. So, your shipper declaration must specifically specify that the parcel of cargo you are going to load is not an, an, an HME if you want to dispose it. If it says it's an HME, it cannot be disposed at sea. Simple. I'm not going to get into the details of it because then it's a different topic altogether. So this is one of the most important information from a chief mate's point of view that the cargo which I'm carrying, is it harmful to the marine environment or not going to uh, be or, or not harmful to marine environment? Why? Because it again governs how I will be handling the residues of the cargo which will be left invariably either on the deck or inside the cargo holes when I am discharging the cargo. So this is again and many a times you will see that this information is not included in the format itself. So you must have you don't have to form, like actually ratify the entire uh, form but you must have a generic idea of few important points like I said like uh, this information related to MAPOL NX5 group uh, grouping of the cargo BCSN. ये पांच से छह सात पॉइंट्स बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स हैं जो आपको पता होने ही चाहिए विच यू कैन नॉट से कि ये मुझे याद नहीं रहे अदर देन दैट यू कैन ऑलवेज गो बैक टू द कोड और टेक अ प्रिंट आउट ऑफ इट कीप इट हैंडी इन योर शिप्स ऑफिस और इन योर मास्टर्स ऑफिस और ऑन द ब्रिज वेर एवर यू आर मोस्ट कंफर्टेबल एंड देन यू कैन ऑलवेज क्रॉस चेक द यू नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू देन दिस डिक्लेरेशन एंड ओवर हियर मेनी अ टाइम्स यू वुड सी दैट द शिपर डिक्लेरेशन गवर्न्स एवरीथिंग एक्सेप्ट फॉर दिस पार्ट दैट मींस the signature is not going to be here and the date is not going to be here now why this is important i'll get back to you in the end but for now you can just remember that this section should always be completed it should always be signed stamped and it must always come with the date what's the relevance of the date i'll come back to it right in the end which is like in the next section why because other than bcsn groups being declared like you know incorrectly declared this information is the most i would say the third most like you know incorrectly declared information i see more often than not the importance of it is goes to the code again i'll show you few requirements of the code which is very very important why i said that the date is required over here is because that code requires the date to be here i'll show you the relevant section of the code now you see the code this is imsbc code now the imsbc code section 4.5 I have hi highlighted it for your reference. So if you come to 4.5, it says interval between sampling, testing and loading for the transportable limit and moisture content determination. So that means code ka, there is a requirement that what can be the separation between the samples being obtained, tested and the cargo being actually loaded. So they, so like I said, you will require two more certificates if, if the cargo is group A. One is the TML certificate. The second certificate is moisture content certificate. And now we are going to see precisely the validity of both the certificates. So whenever you receive these certificates, whenever you receive the uh, shipper's declaration, you are going to cross check the dates and we'll come to these dates. Now, this is very, very important guys, because if your date is wrong, your acceptance for that shipper declaration also is going to be incorrect. First thing first. The TML certificate, transportable moisture limit certificate is only valid for the six months from the time you are going to load. So if I am going to load today, my shipper's de declaration can be only dated back within the six months period. So if my certificate is more than six months old for transportable moisture limit, I will not accept that certificate. I will tell my shipper, I will tell my agent, I will tell my charter that please give me the latest certificate because this certificate is expired and cannot be accepted. So the validity of the TML certificate is only six months from the date you are going to load, not the date you have arrived. For example, today I have arrived in the port, I want to load coal and I'm going to be at Anchorage for next one month. I received the decla uh, shipper's declaration on arrival because as a master, I'm quite anxious to know about shipper's declaration. I got a uh, shipper's declaration with a TML certificate, moisture content certificate. And after one month when the loading starts, if the uh, TML certificate already had a validity of six months and if I cross that period, that if it is now seven months old, I have to ask shipper to provide me with the latest certificate again. So remember guys, from the date you commence loading, not when you arrive in the port, the TML certificate is only valid for the six days, say uh, six months. Coming to moisture content certificate, moisture content, cer uh, content certificate has different requirements. Moisture content certificate is only valid for seven days, guys. Sir, seven days only valid. So remember, TML certificate is valid for six months from the time of loading, and you can go in the back date. 
TML, uh, the moisture content certificate is only valid for seven days. So if I am going to start loading on the eighth and the TML certificate is issued on the first, that means, uh, sorry, the moisture content certificate is issued on the first, then that moisture, cert uh, moisture content certificate is not valid. I must go back to the shipper and ask him to reissue the certificate by again retesting the moisture content of the cargo. And the only time I can also go back to the chart, uh, charter or the shipper again and ask them to reissue this certificate is in case that when I'm loading the cargo, say like for example, now if I'm loading coal, the coal cargo, the stockpiles will always be exposed to weather. Example, there's a heavy rain and it continues to rain. The moisture of the cargo, the stockpile is not going to stay same because a lot of water is going to drain, sweep down the cargo. So if I as a master anticipate that my cargo has been exposed to torrential rains, to, uh, a heavy amount of moisture, I can... I'm well within my rights to go back to the charter and ask them to again reissue the moisture content certificate though my moisture content certificate is still within that seven days period. So remember seven days period all going well. But if there's a barish, snow, or snow, or very high humidity, or our CAN tests are concerning. CAN tests are not official, but they're recommended tests which can give you certain amount of hint that how is the cargo, how much is the moisture content of the cargo. So if the if my can test results are concerning, I see heavy rainfall, heavy snowfall, I can always even though be, I'm within the seven days window period, I can go back to the charter with those with the pictures of my can test and I can ask and I can I, I can raise my concerns. If the charters, shippers, they're not replying to me, I can go back to the owners and the owners in that case, they are going to appoint something called a PNI surveyor who's going to back up my uh, you know, my, my results and then the whole thing goes into, uh, you know, a lot of paperwork exercise. We are not going to discuss that because we are going to pretty much stick to the, uh, our, our format of, uh, uh, the shipper's declaration. So basically guys, shipper's declaration, moisture content certificate is valid for seven days. TML certificate is valid for six months from the date of loading. These are few important points, 4.5.2 and the, uh, TML, if you if you ever go want to go back, is 4.5.1. So when you open the code, look, go into this particular section, and you can always revise the validity of the certificates in case you guys forget later. Coming again to the shipper's declaration. This is the shipper's declaration. This is part of the code. This is from the code itself. Now there are going to be, like I said, few mandatory information. If you want to see, if you want to revise for. Or if you want to prepare for your exams, you have to theoretical answer dena that what are the important informations which must be included in the shipper's declaration, then the code itself provides you these information that what all is, is required to be covered under the code. And if tomorrow anybody challenges you commercially or like an agent challenging you that this is not required, you can always quote the code itself. So the code wants you to include the BCNS, uh, BCSN of the cargo. The group of the cargo has to be included. The IMO class, if that is applicable, needs to be included in shipper's declaration. The UN number itself is required. Point number five, total quantity of the cargo offered, like we discussed, has to be included. Stowage factor has to be included. The moisture content and the TML of the cargo needs to be included on the certificate as well as uh, needs to be included on the shipper's declaration. And it also needs to be, you know, backed up by a proper certificate, you know, and the test, the test procedure itself are provided in the code. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but there are recommended tests only by which you can decide how much is the moisture content and, you know, the TML of the cargo, not like tomorrow you generate your own, you know, way of testing the moisture content. Number 10 point is again, wet base. Now, these few points may be, you know, little bit here and there, how they will be described in the generic area of the shipper's declaration. But again, something worth paying your attention to. Toxic or flammable gases, like, like I said, in case of coal, you will see many a times the shipper will declare that the cargo is liable to, uh, you know, emit methane. Now, flammability, toxicity, corrosiveness, pro, uh, you know, uh, propensity of oxygen depletion. This is, you will see many a cargo will show these kind of properties. I have seen many a times this kind of information mentioned for coal cargo. Self-heating property, again, many a cargo like coal and I would say, uh, say like if you are uh, loading steel scrap will have these kind of concerns, self-heating. Then there are point 14, 15 and 17. Again, these are not as important. I would say these are requirements of the codes, but the first uh, nine points are very, very important. I have never carried a radioactive uh, cargo. so. Very little experience on that. I'll be honest about it. But these 16 to 17 points is requirement of the code. So examination point of view, you can always come to this section or up in pure satra points or answer kar sakte and that will cover everything from your examiner's point of view. But other than that, from normal routine shipping point of view, so far as you know, this 
uh, format, uh, you know, you will be pretty much very, very comfortable, uh, you know, of what is required of the code. Now coming back to the last bit of the code itself, say like I'm loading, I'll again take coal because coal is the most coal cargo ke upar sabse other questions aate hain bulk carriers ke liye whenever it comes to even uh, uh, your oral examinations and your uh, uh, you know even your theory exams because coal cargo is one of the most complicated cargo to carry group a bhi hota hai group b bhi hota hai methane emission chemical hazard sab matlab it's a complete uh, you know it's a perfect storm kind of a cargo but itna difficult nahi hota when you are carrying it regularly then you pretty much you know you know what has to be done with the coal and how it has to be handled so coming to coal cargo ye aa gaya coal cargo now let's quickly run through the coal cargo you see the group is described over here so whenever you are in doubt you can come to the amso shipper's declaration is kind of a summary of the code but each cargo its properties its hazards are described in much more detail how it has to be loaded precautions before loading during loading ventilation requirement all this will be covered by the code itself so code ka summary aap ek shipper's declaration ko maan sakte hain you know lump sum chota sa summary ek paper mein bana ke de diya jise bolte hai na important points jaise hamara live ho raha hai us tarike se kuch jise summary so if you go to the if you come to the coal cargo you will see all this information is also included in the code itself so it's very important whenever you're loading loading bulk cargo if you you must come back to msbc code ye janani hai this is the code this is the place where you should seek maximum information code other than that you can read pni circulars your company itself will always include a lot of information but if you have missed this pretty much you are already out of the game so you you will see in case of coal it will give you the angle of repose bulk density storage factor but this is all generic information it may not be applicable to the parcel of the coal you are carrying and you will see you know coal being described as bituminous and anthracite so coming back to the bcs and uh, uh, bulk cargo shipping name i'll again show you the bulk this is the bulk cargo shipping name so every cargo is described by its bcns in the code so that's where you will get see clinker ash so this cargo has to be described as clinker ash you cannot write it ash clinker that is not going to be the correct bcs and so always make sure that you get the correct bcs and we can have a look at one or two more examples now this cargo is clay so the bcs and of this cargo is clay now you can write as write it as australian clay indian clay that can that is only a trade name not the bcs and so very very important that you come to the code and all information provided for that cargo related to its storage segregation hold cleanliness will be included pretty much in the code backed up by a shipper's declaration so this was our quick live a quick run through shipper's declaration and i hope it helps you guys on board whenever you are loading a bulk cargo which is being governed and regulated by the requirements of IMSBC code and with that we will wrap up the session in case you have got any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section agar aapko ye live pasand aaya ho to do leave a thumbs up and do leave your uh, rotate curve screen i'm sorry guys i understand that this must be coming to you as a mirror image but most of it was pretty straight forward and in case you still just google shipper's declaration a lot of pdf formats as required by the code will show up you know in case you have got any questions you can leave it in the comment section apologies as i was not able to entertain much of the questions today as i was pretty much focused on what was supposed to be covered in the live today मैं लाइव को ज्यादा लंबा नहीं करना चाहता था बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल दे कम बैक एंड दे वॉच द लाइव और एक घंटे का लाइव है तो बहुत मुश्किल होता है कवर करने के लिए सो थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन गुड नंबर्स टुडे एंड सपोर्टिंग द कंटेंट और इन केस अगर आपको ये कंटेंट पसंद आया हो तो जरूर शेयर करिएगा लीव योर कॉमेंट्स एंड इन केस यू वॉन्ट मी टू कवर एनी अदर टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू बल्क कैरियर्स इन योर फ्यूचर ऑन माइ इन माई नेक्स्ट लाइफ प्लीज डू फील फ्री टू लीव इट इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन बिकॉज कॉमेंट सेक्शन में अगर आप जनरली डीएम्स में छोड़ते हैं तो वो एरिया थोड़ा सा मुश्किल होता है पकड़ने के लिए आई डोंट विजिट माय डीएम्स दैट ऑफन अदर देन माय प्राइमरी डीएम्स सो डू लीव योर फीडबैक द टॉपिक्स यू वांट मी टू कवर इन योर कमेंट सेक्शन एंड रिमेंबर गाइस आपका आर के लिए ड्यूरिंग द वर्किंग डेज एटलीस्ट टू आर स्टोरीज विल ऑलवेज बी देयर अगर और अगर आपने वो मिस कर दी है तो दे आर ऑलवेज सेव्ड ऑन माई टाइम लाइन यू कैन गो एंड पार्टिसिपेट इन द मेरी टाइम क्विज एंड प्रिटी मच दैट कैन हेल्प यू कवर और एटलीस्ट यू नो अलाउ यू टू ब्रश अप you know the rusty rr parts so that's my way of returning back for you supporting the page and spending time on the page you know thoda khao thoda feko thoda seekho thoda maze karo so today's live was something related to information other than that hum log jo apna trashy content hai reels ke through wo banate rahenge wo page mein thoda sa maza masala dalna zaruri hai because aajkal boring education se log thak chuke hain boring training se log thak chuke hain the whole idea is to bridge this gap between training and application by keeping the page one uh, keeping the page rewarding by some entertainment and some knowledge base 
uh, information. So with that, we'll wrap up the live today. Thanks a lot. You guys take care and a very happy new year to the entire Insta family. And thanks a lot for joining. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye.